I am never trying to 1v1. You sound like a robot. I am never trying to 1v1. <laughs> I feel like a robot every time I have to say it. Well, maybe oh, you know one what I feel time. Like? You know what I feel say like? say yes. You know what I feel like? Tell me. A broken record. Wow. Tell you what. <laughs> My name is Rob and I smell a little bit like cheese. <laughs> okay. Calm down over there, Pepper Jack. Pepper Jack cheese is good. It is. Let me ask you a question. What do you think Sparky would think if she heard all the negative things you say about her? Trash cans can't hear anything, Rob. Wow, man, you, you can't stop with the, with the negative comments. It's not negative, Rob. It's the truth. <laughs>the clash royale podcast for casual players i'm rob and i'm joe and this week we discuss our weeks in the arena the balance changes the changing meta and a really sweet deck Ooh. boom boom and if you're listening on apple podcasts google podcasts overcast clnsmedia.com or wherever you get your podcasts we hope you enjoy the show episode 77 baby let's Go. I know that 77 doesn't really mean anything here, but it looks cool. You want to know what's cool about 77? I'm really excited to learn something about 77. It's a palindrome. What? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's like spelled the same way, forward and backwards. Oh, right, right, right. That's what that is. Not, not literally, right? Like not 77, the, the words. But if you just put 77 next to each other, they are... By definition, a palindrome. Right, except we ruin that with uh, a zero in front of two numbers. Well, yeah, we don't call this episode 077. That's just how it's written out. Hashtag facts. Boom. Mm-hmm. So what's up, man? It's the new year, dude. How, how you doing on your New Year's resolution? Ah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, so... <laughs> Just your your lack of responses is, is so telling. I mean, I've been. Does it count that I've been trying? Yes, of course it counts. Like I try and be so present whenever I I should be present. Mm-hmm. But I find myself in 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 virtual reality clash royale. <laughs> yeah, I can see that. Have you uh, have you gotten mad at any games so far? Nah. Yeah. New games? No. Clash Royale? Yeah. You know, it's funny. I actually wind up getting mad, and then for half a second, I just take a deep breath, and I'm like, hmm, I made a promise to myself and the world, so I'm going to try and keep it. Yeah. No, that's good. I mean, I bet it makes playing more fun, but I find myself like, I'm, I, I really do. I try to be more present, but then like, I'm just, I just click battle again. That's the problem. Once the battle button is tapped, it's really hard to press that cancel button. I'm like, hold on, babe. I just need a minute. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, three minutes later, because there's still three minutes left in the game, and I'm like, I need a minute, right? <laughs> yeah, three o- minutes, always. Th- three minutes later, I click battle again. Yeah, and you need another quote-unquote minute. Minute, right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, I'm the same way with I'm the same way with the clash for me, uh, but also Brawl Stars. I do the same thing. I'm just like, ah, I'll just play another game. I need a minute. Yeah, so I've been playing three games. I've been playing Clash Royale, I've been playing uh Brawl Stars, and dude, I've been trying to get back into Hearthstone. Really? The bread and butter where it all started, yeah. Ooh, you're gonna have to uh catch up on Legend of the Innkeeper so you can start uh picking up some tips. That's true, dude. That that is <laughs> that is true. I am a little bit behind, but I, I do need to do that. Yeah, it, you probably have no idea what's going on. Aren't they doing like that Rastafarian rumble thing? I don't know what it's called. I've been watching people on Twitch play, and it's actually pretty cool, man. They've gotten like the solo adventures that you can do can keep you busy. You can play for free. I mean, it's more free to play friendly now because they have like rotations where mm-hmm. you can go into the quote unquote wild and have you know first decks of all available cards that have ever existed. Or you can play what's called standard, like they did in Magic. Uh, after so many cards came out, they like rotate what cards are available. Oh yeah, like the new season and stuff. That's pretty cool. Right. 
So only what's been released the past two years is available to play in standard. So it's yeah. there, there's less out there. You don't have to spend so much time gathering all these new cards, like which I find pretty interesting. Yeah, maybe uh, when we get enough cards in Clash, we'll see something similar. Yeah, I think we've got a while to go, well, seeing as we're only at 90. But Yeah, they probably don't have to worry about this for at least another, I don't know, 20 more cards. 70 years. Yeah, 77 more cards. <laughs> Specifically 77. Right, because in case you didn't know, it's a palindrome. What's that? Good question. <laughs> go out on the line and check the Google. The Google. All right, man, well, how was your week in the arena? I get to go first? Yeah, well, Little, little Brother Never Leads, so let's go. Except every other episode. But yeah, I'll do right, this one. Right, It's a new year. Same boom. That's true. You ready? Ready. Well, currently, this season, I'm kind of... No, I'm kind of not taking it as seriously as I hinted at earlier at the beginning of the episode. Uh, 44, 77 trophies this season so far. 44, 77. Where did you wind up landing last season? That's actually a really good question. Uh, so I wound up making it to Master 1 again. Nice, dude. Yeah, 49, 54 trophies. So not my highest. My, my, my highest is sadly, but also excitingly, 49, 99. That's so heartbreaking. Yeah, I mean, like, what did I have to do to get that extra trophy? Well, you would have had to click battle again. I think I just needed to be better. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what it comes down to. It's like, Rob, you, you shouldn't even be up here, so we're not going to give you that one trophy. That game was definitely trying to tell you something. It knows what it's doing. Um, so, yeah, that's been my season in the current week. Uh, I also got a princess from a seasoned end chest as well as an e-whiz from a war chest. I don't know if you were uh, counting there, but that was two different legendaries. All in two weeks. You always wind up getting all these legendaries. You're like the, the legendary whisperer. That's me. They just come to me. I just open my eyes and start thinking about them, and they just show up. Do me a favor. Send me some miners. That's what you need? Yes. You got it, bro. I'm happy to help. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, and then really proud of the clan... We are currently sitting at Cast Royale is killing it with 4517 trophies. Boom. Yeah. Uh, I don't remember what we were at last episode, maybe like 43. So we're up about 200. So that's pretty sick. Keeping up the good climb, man. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So that's my final thing for this week in the arena. How about you? So I am currently sitting at 4794. Excellent job. Which at this point in any season is the highest I've ever been. Um, mm -hmm. Like so early on in the season. I'm still using Pompeo's Balloon Cycle deck. But dude, semi-major announcement. I think it's pretty major. You even got a comment about it in the meta check from uh, Devin. So yeah, it's pretty major. Major announcement. <laughs> Change of tune. Last episode, I announced... A new PB, right? So after, a, I think it was like after a year of being at Master 1, last week I announced that I finally surpassed that PB and got to Master 2, right? Right. Two weeks later, using Pompeo's Balloon Cycle deck, I have made it to Master 3. I have the blue potion and my new personal best, get this, 55-24. What? Dude, I don't even know what happened. I'm not, I can't even, I can't even describe what occurred, right? Like I was at my, 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 my new PB, right? Yeah. And then every single time I would play another game, I would wait. Like I, I wouldn't just like keep clicking the battle button. I would only play like two, maybe three games per day. And I would spread them out, like totally spread them out. And like randomly, I would just go into the game and be like, ah, you know what, I'll just, I'll just do it. So I went in and I would win. And that kept happening. I think, it, I, I forget like, you know, what the, the final count was, but I think I wound up going like, like 15 and, and three or 15 and four to mm -hmm. get from 5,200 to 5,500. And uh, dude, I was ecstatic. I didn't play the rest of the season. I was totally done, tapped out. And it just felt so incredibly good. You drank all the blue potion. Oh, I drank all of the blue <laughs> potion. Celebrated with a bottle of blue potion. That's amazing. Uh, but dude, everybody in the clan was super supportive. Like, it felt so great, you know, to like do, do something that I was like pr proud of for myself for finally getting to. I never, ever thought I could get there. But then also what made it so cool was that 
so many members of the community noticed and like reached out to me and like congratulated me and like it just felt really cool like that that camaraderie and like support was there as well it's it's it was really awesome yeah that's pretty sick uh I'm happy for you, dude. That's fantastic. I wish, I wish I could get there. I really need to start playing with that deck because even with your wonderful explanation, by the way, I just don't think that that deck works with my ridiculously impatient style. <laughs> I'm glad you said it because the, the, the one word I was going to say after you said that was patience, Rob. Well, I would expect you to know exactly why I can't play well. Well... Pompeo's papaya, man. If 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 you ever need to spectate, I mean, I can show you how to play it. So I'm gonna watch you play that deck, and then I'm just gonna realize that there's no point in even trying, and I might even just stop playing Clash and just stick to Brawl Stars. Nah, come on. Ah, uh, I don't know. Maybe we can do some uh, private tutoring, and you can charge me under the table the way that I did when I gave you guitar lessons when we were younger. It did happen, although I won't <laughs> steep that low, Rob. Ah. <laughs> uh. I was a ridiculous older brother, everybody, just in case you were wondering. I charged my own younger brother for guitar lessons that I could have done easily for free. Don't, don't do what I did, kids. $10 per lesson. And the lesson wasn't even, a ha- it wasn't even an hour. No, but t- I mean, hey, to be fair, $10 for anything that's a quote-unquote lesson is, is good. I was 12 years old and didn't work or have a job, Rob. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah i don't know i mean mean, when you put it like that when you put it that way (laughs) it's a pretty pretty tough tough move rob yeah well i mean now i'm a pretty cool older brother i think pretty cool a little bit but aside from that that's been my week weeks in the arena it's been pretty good i am also extremely proud of the castrial 2 clan who is currently sitting at clan war trophies of 4874 dude we are rocking we are rolling we are hipping and hopping we are moving and grooving high flying and limousine riding baby let's go shout out to my boy robot there it is see he's he's fully immortalized in our audio now that's right yeah so we had some stuff happen in this game other than that we had the three kings gifts for free in the shop we got what for what from where you don't know what i'm talking about We got something for free. I can't even believe I'm about to explain this to you on the show. Joe, on or right before Three Kings Day, which is January 6th, my birthday, we got three Kings gifts that were 3,333 gold for free, and then three golden chests for free. You missed this? What were you, off the grid? You went dark for two days? I didn't get this. I didn't have an offer. My game totally didn't have this. I think the issue is user error. That's, that's what I think. I think the problem is between the computer and the chair. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm going to reach out to the Supercell customer support people and be like, hello, my brother just told me that there was this free gift. I didn't see this on my game, and you can check because I clearly played that day. Yeah, and by the way, I'm the host of the Cast Royale podcast because we, we worship your game. So could you, like, give me my gift? Can you give me my gift that I missed? Yeah, please. <laughs> no, but dude, that's awesome. I wish it, so it was one gift, like the Three Kings gifts, but it was really one gift, right? Like, you got the gold plus the three chests all in one package? Nailed it. Wow. Yeah. I totally missed out. You definitely missed out. Yeah. Well, oh, well, next time. There's always next year, right? There's always, there's always next time. Yeah. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. But you know what I did see? Tell me about it. This is what I thought you were going to say originally. The Three Kings Day Draft Challenge. It blows my mind that you were able to see this, but not the gift. Well, that's what I'm saying. I saw that. Yeah. (laughs) I don't get it. I don't, I don't, I don't understand. But what happened with this challenge? Well, I mean, it is the Three Kings Day Draft Challenge, but can I just say it started off as the E <laughs> Kings Day Draft Challenge? It certainly did. <laughs> you know, it's funny when I looked at it, I was like, are they trying to like, is this like a pun or something? It's like, are the kings so awesome that they are the kings? <laughs> <laughs> or is it, uh, uh, it, are they trying to make some weird Shakespearean reference? Well, that's what I was thinking. I was like, are they saying like, they, thou, thy, the, like, ah, yep. like the kings? All right. Like I get it then. But then the more I looked at it, I was just, that just looks so weird. Yeah. 
They fixed it though, right? Lo and behold, they fixed it. They did fix it because I'm sure they were <laughs> called out on that immediately. Immediately. Yeah, yeah. Though they tend to get called out on everything immediately by just go on Twitter or Reddit and you'll see it. But not before I was able to grab a screenshot. Yeah, I took one too. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so yeah, this challenge was actually pretty sweet. Uh, I like when they do these tiered challenges. So like the stage one, right? You can, you, you can afford getting all the losses. It doesn't matter. It's based on crowns. Then when you get to stages two and three, obviously it's, it's much more about the losses. You can't get three losses. Once you get three, then you're out. Yeah. I, I love the, the three tier thing as well. I, this is one of the more recent ones where I haven't finished it. Actually, I, I did the first two and I got through them all. But then when I got in, I think they were all draft challenges, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but then when when we got to the third one, I think I, I I was short like two wins from getting all of them. And then I saw that the reentry fee was only like 30 gems, which I thought, I thought was pretty cool. But then I was like, am I going to spend 30 gems just for like the small remaining rewards that I may or may not get? Yeah, I felt I felt the same way. Uh, and I made it to the third tier too, but I was just like, nah. I can't do it. After I lost, I was done. Yeah, it was just like the, the three tiers, like trying it three different times, you know? Um, but I got to be honest, it was much more tempting that the gem cost was only 30 and not 100. I was just going to say, right? Like, don't get me wrong. Love the fact that it was a lower gem uh, cost entry fee. But it just, it, it wasn't appealing when I only needed like one or two more wins and the, the rewards just weren't worth 30 gems. Yep. And then not only did we get the cool challenge, but we also had two different tournaments. So we had a New Year's tournament and then also uh, a global tourney. Yeah, that's right. And I I guess at the time of this recording, the global tournament is currently going on. But dude, the New Year's tournament, did you see what the top player got in that tournament? Wasn't it like over 100? Over 100. It was like 123 or 124 or something ridiculous. It was the boss, Hay, and he's a content creator from Tribe gaming and uh he was at like 54 and zero (laughs) that's illegal i think in most states i think i might have mentioned this on the last episode don't get me wrong we are not like the best players of clash royale right obviously but we're also not the worst so like every global tournament that we've been in we get like between eight and ten wins right Right. eight ten i think on the high end we might have gotten like 13 yep but that's 13 and four (laughs) right right 53 and zero by the time i get into my like fifth win i'm playing people i'm just like how am i how can i ever win right now and are right and aren't you exhausted like i feel i feel like every time i play those things a very small part of me is like whispering to the bigger part of me going you gotta lose you gotta lose just lose you gotta lose just end it (laughs) just let it go yeah exactly i don't know i just uh, it's kind of how I feel like when I go into uh, a showdown match sometimes and someone starts talking to me in real life and I'm like, oh man, I'm j- I just got to die. Save yourself. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is good. I like it. Yeah. No, I, 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 I like the global tournaments. One of what I like best about the global tournaments, not only do the people who do really well have a great chance to get recognized for themselves, mm-hmm. but a little bit more selfishly, isn't it cool to see what deck got 123 wins? Oh, yeah. That's a good point. Right? Because then you can maybe practice it, and if it worked for him, maybe it could work for you. Right. It's really funny that you say that because I literally never thought to do that. Well, you know, that's what I'm here for, Rob. Tips by Joe. You don't even have to wait for them to get to 123 wins. Like, if they were at 100 wins and they're playing, you can go in there and spectate them, and you can actually see them play the deck. All great advice. Like, things that I should uh consult with you about before i do anything in the game that's what i'm here for rob and and Mm -hmm. i still will not charge you ten (laughs) dollars now so there's that i should just hand you ten dollars like every time i see you just to make up for that (laughs) just be like hey hey joe here you go what's this just i I owe you man i owe you paying you back plus interest (laughs) it's it's an installment plan here boom tonight we are sponsored by robin hood Hey Rob, did you know that Robinhood is an investing app that lets you buy and sell stocks, ETFs, options, and cryptos all commission-free? They strive to make financial services work for everyone, not just the wealthy. It's a non-intimidating way for newcomers to the stock market to invest for the first time with true confidence. 
It's simple yet intuitive, and because of its clear design, the data is presented in an easy-to-digest way. Yeah, man, I've actually been using Robinhood long before they became a sponsor on the show, way back in 2016, actually. And the main reason why is because they don't charge commission. Other brokerages charge up to $10 for every trade, but Robinhood doesn't charge you anything. You can trade stocks completely free, and you get to keep all of the profits that you make. Plus, when I first opened up the account, I didn't know anything about the stock market, but the app tells you everything you need to know. I learned how to invest as I built my own portfolio. I was able to discover new stocks and I can track the companies that I really wanted to pay attention to. So I really, really, really love this app. Yeah, man, honestly, this app seems like a no brainer to me. And what's even cooler is that Robinhood is giving our listeners a free stock like Apple, Ford or Sprint to help them build their portfolio. Sign up at castroyale.robinhood.com. That's C-A-S-T-R-O-Y-A-L-E dot Robinhood, all one word, dot com. Thanks a lot to Robinhood for sponsoring our show. You know what time it is? Oh, I know exactly what time it is, and I am so excited. I know, it's been a while, but it's time for Boom It or Move It! Boom It or Move It! Yeah, man. So this is for the January 7th balance changes. And dude, we got some very cool changes coming up. Are you ready for this one? No. Yes. Let's go. Are you sure? You sound hesitant. Who's on first? I don't know. Third base. All right. Number one is to the heal spell, which had its elixir cost decrease from three to one its duration was reduced from 2.5 seconds to 2 seconds, and its healing per second was decreased by 63%. Boom it or move it. Woof. <laughs> you don't even, he, can't, he, can't even, uh, he can't even use the right words, guys. I'm exhausted from this change. Yeah, let's, let's break it down. I mean, if you want to talk it through first before you decide, you don't have to decide right now. Yeah, I, I will do that. Right. So, so, so I like the fact that they're changing the heal. Okay. Mm-hmm. Like the heal spell to me was the 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 monkey wrench in the game. Uh, at least one of the monkey wrenches in the game that caused the game to feel like a rock paper scissors type of game, mm-hmm. where if I bring poison and you bring heal, I lose. Right. If I bring heal and you bring fireball, you win. Right. Um. So. T- to me, it was one of those things, and plus, like it, it, it worked extremely well, ironically, with decks like the Three Musketeers, which are already overpowered, right? So right. you get into this mode where not only are you countering spells like the poison, and it's making the game very rock paper scissor, but you're also countering a whole bunch of other decks because the Three Musketeers are just innately good, which we talked about on the last episode, right? Something needed to be done. So, so what they did with this change is they reduced the cost, made it more of a cycle card, reduced how long it heals for, and reduced the healing in general. So the, the point of it was to make the card good with bait or zappable cards. Uh, for example, Minion Horde, uh, Goblin Gang, Goblin Barrels, uh, Goblins, right? Right. Um, anything that could get damaged but not survive. So w- w- what does this do? If, if you throw this thing on a goblin barrel after it's been zapped, well, none of them are going to die, so you're going to get a tremendous amount of damage on the tower. Mm-hmm. Um, what I found ironic about this change is that, again, the main cards that this was good with was the Three Musketeers, right? What I found ironic was that this change helps cards that go into Three Musketeer decks. So for example, Three Musketeers are commonly run with Minion Horde. Three Musketeers are commonly run with Goblin Gang. So you're taking a meta of Three Musketeers that's already dominant, and then you're making them, in theory, better, because now you can use the heal spell at a cheaper, cyclable cost, Mm -hmm. along with cards that it's now working with even better, like Minion Hordes and and Goblin Gang, right? Now, I'm not saying it's, it's perfect, but that's the concept, right? Here's one thing it won't do, though. The change for the heal will not prevent Fireball Log or Fireball Zap from killing a Musketeer, a Wizard, or anything like that. Um, So the amount of healing and the duration that it does it for doesn't prevent 
fireball log, fireball zap combos to go off and, and prevent it from dying. That's key, though. That is key, because then it would have made three musketeer decks even way... They, they would have been unbeatable, right? Right. They would have had to change the three musketeers. Right. And it, I think inevitably, like we talked about last episode, that's going to happen at some point. Mm-hmm. And can I make a prediction? Uh, a balance change prediction? Sure. And then I, st- I, I still need to hear your answer for this card. I'll give it to you. All right. The balance change prediction is this. They are having such a hard time balancing the three musketeers because they're linked with the regular musketeer, right? Mm-hmm. When they figure out a way to balance the three musketeers and nerf them, I promise you, you will see a direct buff to the actual musketeer card. They will nerf the three musketeers and they will buff the musketeer. Somehow, that has to be done. That's a bold statement. Has to be done. I, I don't disagree with you. I'm just saying it's bold. So, boom it or move it? I'm going to boom the change. Mm-hmm. I think it takes it away from a rock, paper, scissor thing, but I am fearful for what could happen with it. Mm. So what you're saying is time will tell. Time will tell. Right. So boom it for now. Boom it for now. All right. Next up, that took a while. I'm sorry. Next up, Magic Archer. He got a buff and Rob, his first attack is now faster again. So we had a little point in time where he was brought back down, right? The first attack was slower. By how much slower, we don't know. But now, his first attack is faster again. By how much again, we don't know. Boom it or move it. I am going to boom this one. Yeah? Yeah. And I'm not going to take nearly as long as you did because I think that a lot of people are going to boom this one because when they nerfed the Magic Archer a couple of months ago, they really did a number on him. I, I, I personally think it almost made him unusable. I mean, and this guy's a legendary, and legendaries need to be unique. They need to be fun. They need to be game-changing, right? And a card that you pretty much destroyed what it's good at, that's no longer game-changing. So now they made the first attack faster, not all the way back to his attack speed, but close enough to at least give him a little bit more of a competitive edge in the arena because he severely needed it. Right, so like you said, not not all the way back to his original first attack speed, but closer to it, right? Right. So I agree. I think this one definitely was necessary. Magic Archer just felt like a, a thud, so to speak. Um, he hit the map and it was just like, he was best at killing small, squishy troops, right? Right, especially sometimes unintentionally from far away. Right, but now what you're best at killing takes forever to then kill. It's like right. counterintuitive. Yeah, really doesn't make any sense. So I think this is an auto boom, if I'm being honest. Agreed. All right, what's next? Uh, number three would be to your beloved Goblin Giant, Ooh. who had his hit points increased by 3%, and then get this, dude, the Spear Goblins on his back, the range was increased. And for those of you that didn't know, regular Spear Goblins are five tiles. These guys are now 5.5 tiles. So with that said, boom it or move it. So I'm going to move this one. Ooh. Not because I think it's the wrong thing, but because this is not enough. So it's the right direction, just not far enough. Yeah, and I'm like, to me... this, like, th- you know how they are. With 3% is small, right? 3% mm-hmm. is when they want to tweak something very small. Just like with hit speed, if they want to do something small, it would be by, by like 0.1, right? Right. Um, this is a small increase. And the Spear Goblin range is cool, but it's it's only 0.5 tiles. And they're Spear Goblins, so they're not, I mean, this that's not make or break. To me, this needs a little bit more health, right? And the Spear Goblins, to me, are just lackluster on it. it, it they feel... Cr- clunky to me um so i think something else has to be done with the spear goblins i don't know what that is maybe add a third one maybe they need the trifecta the triforce in there yeah like maybe you know i don't know it could be totally overpowered i don't know but i do think this thing either way definitely needs more health or maybe they'll keep playing with the increase of the uh the distance at which they can shoot right maybe instead of 5.5 they go to six yeah yeah whatever it is something else has to be done to the spear goblins i think oh i totally agree all right, next up is the Golem, but actually to the Golemites that spawned from the Golem. And they had their death damage pushback reduced. Boom it or move it? Boom. Tell me why. So I love this change, and I think that most people that probably play the Golem are not going to really like this change, but 
I think that the reason that they gave on Reddit was fantastic. Essentially, this one stat is where they were kind of the same, right? Between the Golem and the Golemites. Every other stat, the Golemites did less than what the Big Daddy Golem did. So why wouldn't the pushback effect also be less when it's the Golemites dying? I feel like this is a good change. And plus, it makes it easier for me to deal with. So maybe that's my selfish bias here. Yeah, no, I don't disagree, right? I mean, plus you look at like these little golem mites, right? That are like mm -hmm. pushing back larger troops a ridiculous amount. <laughs> right. Um, so it just seems awkward, right? Like, yeah, you push back something, a tile and a half or whatever, two tiles, whatever it is with the golem. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. But when a golemite is doing that to like a night witch, it's like, what? <laughs> right, exactly. So I'm happy about this change. Are you ready for the next one? I'm ready. All right. The next one is to the Freeze, Mr. Freeze. Mr. Freeze. Yeah, so the Freeze had its tower damage decreased by a whomping 65%. Boom it or move it. Boom. You have to, right? Boom. It makes the most sense out of all of these changes, I think. It actually made literally zero total sense why it was the only spell in the game that did 100% of its damage to a tower. Yeah, I didn't get it whatsoever, and I'm surprised that they missed that. It was definitely a miss, for sure. I think so. Yep, I think it was a miss. And that's okay, that happens, but it's good to see them fix it now. Totally agree, but love the change. I do too. I, don't, I really don't think there's much to say about it because this is the way it should have been from the get-go. Well, I still think it shouldn't have any damage. Overall? Overall, but if it's going to have damage, it needs to be reduced to the tower. Wow, Joe, I feel like I'm learning so much about you right now in this wonderful Clash Hour. You've opened up Pandora's box, man. You want to unravel the onion, we can do it. I feel like I don't even know you anymore. Who am I? Who are you and what have you done with my brother? My name is Arnold Swartempire. Oh, no. You've been iced. <laughs> my arm is like a python. It just keeps snapping <laughs> at you. Good. I'm so happy that you just went with that. Thank you. You ready? But I am ready, yeah. The next one is to the Sparky, who had her range increased from 4.5 tiles to 4.75 tiles. But wait. What? There's more. There better be. We come to learn that there are rounding things mm -hmm. with 4.75 tile range. And so instead, Sparky goes to 5 tiles. Ooh. So in total... She got a 0.5 tile range increase instead of a 0.25 tile range increase. As originally intended. Boom it or move it? I'm going to boom it. No! I'm booming it. You can't. I'm booming it. I'm booming it. And I don't care what you say. It's happening. This is what happens when you make me read the first one to you. You don't get to do Sparky. If you did this, you could move it. And I hear it in your voice. I can't believe it. Let's, let's try and hear why. Do I have to give you a reason? What if I was just doing it because I knew it was going to make you mad? That's a reason. That's my reason. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's, a, that's, all, that's the only reason I need. I literally hate the fact that this thing got buffed. I know, but did you see what they said? No. This very small range increase allows it to one-shot an Electro Wizard before the Electro Wizard gets to get it shot off. Cool. If so facto, it definitely immediately counters... Sparky's immediate counter. Or one of, I should say. But what's the point of that? Um, I don't know. Maybe that was like a really bad interaction throughout the meta that you never saw because you don't like Sparky! So, so here's what they're basically <laughs> saying. If Sparky has range on the E-Wiz, it mm -hmm. will counter the E-Wiz. But if you drop the E-Wiz on the Sparky, E-Wiz has the advantage. Right, like that's what they're saying. They're saying if E-Wiz is close, E-Wiz has the advantage. If E-Wiz is far, Sparky has the advantage. That's basically what they're doing. As opposed to this card hard counters this card. And how can you think that that's not a boom? I feel like that's the way balances should work, right? Okay, One situation okay, it works, okay, another situation okay. it doesn't work. Okay, Rob. So so here's my, uh, my rebuttal, okay? <laughs> yeah, go ahead. I would like for the Inferno Dragon. <laughs> yeah, what? Okay. If yeah. the Inferno Dragon has distance on the E-Wiz, yeah. it should shoot out a bomb that mm. blows up the E-Wiz. But if the E-Wiz is on top of the Inferno Dragon, then fine. It should counter it. Why should a card only counter a card in a very specific scenario? Because 
you're killing me here. So, all right. So, what are what are some of the hard counters to Sparky? Rocket can't do anything about that unless you change the health of Sparky or change the damage of a rocket, right? Zap stops Sparky from getting its charge off and it resets everything. A zap can be used on the other side of the arena. An Electro Wizard cannot. So like when you have the Electro Wizard on your side and you're defending, you should be able to drop an Electro Wizard right on top of Sparky and make it stop doing what it's supposed to be doing. But if somebody gets their Electro Wizard on the other side of the arena and Sparky's over there, I feel like that's fair game. I feel like it should die. It makes no sense to me, actually, now that I'm thinking about it. And even more of a reason why I want to make sure that I keep booming it, because you just don't like this card. And you will poop on it whenever you can. It's not that I'll poop on it. Mm Mm-hmm. I I didn't... I hate the card. I know. But I didn't mind the way that it was before, but I still... Like, I hated the card, but, like, why... The, The reason for the buff is so that it counters its counter. But... What other card is that true with? What other card is there? I counter you, but you counter me. Cards are made with counters in mind. No, that's a that's a good point. I get what you're saying. Give me the vice versa, right? Like if you can give me the vice versa, then I'll say okay. Maybe that maybe maybe this is just like maybe this is a common thing that I'm missing. But like a goblin and a spear goblin, you're never gonna have a spear goblin kill a goblin, right? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. And now that I'm thinking about it, maybe. Maybe, okay, maybe I'll give you this. Mm-hmm. If if you have a Mega Minion, you can throw it directly on top of a Flying Machine, and it'll counter it, right? It'll take two hits, and the Mega Minion will kill the Flying Machine. But if you play the Flying Machine back and have further distance, the Flying Machine will counter the Mega Minion, right? There you go. There's your answer. However, those two cards are not direct counters to one another right like they weren't designed with those two in mind right but maybe the problem is and sorry to say you don't have the data on it it sounds like the electro wizard is like commonly used to take care of sparky and sparky seems to always be at a disadvantage personally that's probably what happened there probably i will (laughs) i will i will agree to disagree, uh, I don't like Sparky. You're so bitter. I'm not bitter. You sound like a bitter old man, Joe. Why have a counter? That that dang Sparky is making noise in the arena. Why have a counter to a card? If you're just going to have the card that it counters, counter that card. What if there's more things coming down the pipeline that we say every single time we come up with stuff on the show? You know what, Rob? You're, prob- you're 100% right. My issue is Sparky. If so facto, Sparky. All right, well, that's that's going to be the theme of the rest of the episode. Good with that? No. You ready for the next one? Yep. Okay. <laughs> Battle Ram had its charge damage decreased by 11%. Boom it or move it? I'm going to boom this one. All right. Wow. I'm, I'm impressed. This is a big decrease. Charge damage, 11% is a huge decrease. And it's even bigger because charge, like the, the, the true charge means that when it's actually charging, normally the charge effect is double, right? So that 11% is felt at 22% in theory if it's actually charging. <laughs> mm-hmm. And I think the, the the argument that Supercell gave, right, was that they want to make kind of hone this one back a little bit and make it a little bit more comparable to the damage that or damage output that a hog rider would bring, right? And to me, that makes sense, right? They're both four-cost cards, both in charge towards the tower or building um it makes a ton of sense to me i think so plus it's also used in a ton of three musketeers decks and also very very popular um pekka decks uh that are typically at the top of the ladder these days so Mm -hmm. uh both of those decks then get a little bit of a nerf opening the way for some other decks i like your style and i like your thought process here well it's not sparky so see this was not emotional for you well Next up is the Barbarian <laughs> Hut, who had its its hit points decreased by 7%. Boom it or move it? I think this is also an insta-boom. I think 99% of the community would agree. I think so, yeah. I mean, like, like they said, they haven't touched this card in years. Uh, it's really difficult to take care of if somebody puts this out on the opposite side of the arena. Um, and... 
if left unchecked, you're never really getting through. The way that they describe it is it becomes an unbreakable wall of defense, which goes against everything that Clash tries to do for this game, right? That's why they originally didn't want to bring the heal spell into the game, because they thought it would promote more defensive style plays. Kind of still does that a little bit, but the Barbarian Hut decrease, I think, is a way to kind of counter that. And man, I am so happy they decided to choose the health of the actual building and not change the Barbarians. Well, yeah, I mean, if they would have nerfed the Barbarians, then they would have nerfed the actual Barbarians, the five cost card as well, right? So And the Barbarian Barrel. And the Barbarian Barrel, right. And, and, and those specific things don't need nerfs at the Barbarian level itself, right? Right. Mm -hmm. um, but like you mentioned, not only was it like an unbreakable force, right? Like a wall um, that you just can't get through. But what was even worse is that you couldn't use any spell, including the rocket, for an even elixir trade. Right. If you use the rocket on it, you still lost elixir. Um, because two to four barbarians still spawn out of it. Right. And it still has a substantial amount of health after one rocket shot. Yeah. Ridiculous amount of health left. So it's kind of, it's kind of like, why am I going to waste this massive spell on a building that still has approximately 25% of its health left and still is on the map for about 20 seconds. Right, and then you decide, eh, I'm not going to, and then what happens? Then it becomes that defensive wall, right? You chose not to attack it, and now it's going to last longer. Plus, theoretically, in your hypothetical situation, your deck probably only has one high-cost spell that can shoot that far, right? So that would be your rocket. So now what are you going to do to get rid of it? Throw a miner at it? No, no, no. See, this is what you do. You, you, you... You resort to plan C. Mm, mm hmm mm hmm Always plan C. Cry emote. Correct. Although there's there's many cry emotes now. Well, you pick your favorite, but it's still crying. That's true. My favorite is the crying Larry. Yes, always. Yeah. Rip. Because no matter what, you always feel sad for him. Yes. Whereas if I cry as the king, I feel like I'm whining and being a baby. Do you feel that way? Yeah, no. You will now. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, are you ready for the next one? Yep. All right. The next one is to the Barbarian Barrel, speak of the devil. And it had its deploy time reduced. Couldn't tell you by how much, but it was reduced. So, boom it or move it. I'm going to boom this one. Yeah? Why? Yeah, so this one, like, the Barbarian Barrel was really great. And it still is really good. Don't get me wrong. But um, it was really great for sniping, like, support troops. Right. Um, like DPS troops that were behind a tank, like a musketeer, a wizard, uh, even a witch. Um, like just those troops that you would roll, a, basically rolling a log through it, and all of a sudden, barbarian spawns out of it and instantly just comes down with its sword. Um, right. it, it felt so instant that the the troop that was being attacked had no time to even react to it. So this like very small reduction in deployment time gives that that troop maybe a chance to get maybe one hit in right like it, it can react plus dude to be honest with you i think we've talked about this on a number of meta checks over the past couple of episodes right the barbarian barrel is ridiculous it's good mm -hmm. it's solid it's a very good well-rounded card used in a ton of different kinds of decks and serves multiple different purposes so naturally you'd expect it to have a higher win rate so this reduction hopefully kind of brings it back down to reality a little bit tames it um, hopefully gives it like an acceptable win rate and, and then they can leave this card alone. Right. All right, man. Last one. You ready? Oh, I'm ready. Let's do it. The Valkyrie. She got a buff. Ooh. Her hit speed is increased from 1.6 seconds down to 1.5. So she now attacks slightly faster. Boom it or move it. I feel like this is going to be very controversial because I did see on the internet that many people were not happy about this for whatever reason, but I'm still going to boom it. Interesting that people don't like it. I, I would have boomed it too, so tell me why. I mean, I don't know why people don't like it. I feel like some people think that this card is like too strong, and I don't really feel that way whatsoever. Um, and again, this is another card that its win rate is not really where it needs to be, and I really appreciate this explanation. So they said that right now, the current meta, like we were talking about earlier, is Battle Ram and Three Musketeer decks. This is the perfect meta for her to destroy in, and she's not doing that. So this card 
may need more than this buff, but right now this buff is definitely a good step in the right direction. So I, I like this card in general. I never use it, but I like what it's for and I like the utility that it serves. Um, plus she's super tanky, right? Uh, and anything to make her act swing around a little bit faster and hear her sound effects, I'm all for it. I agree. Mm-hmm. So that's it, man. What would your grade be? An F. Nope. F for fun. F for Sparky. No. You got a grade on a curve here. Okay. <laughs> you have to. You can't. You can't destroy the whole balance update, boom it or move it thing because you don't like Spock, 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 Sparky. All right. I'll I'll exclude Sparky from my grading analysis. That's good. All right. So Sparky gets the F in Joe's book. Sparky. Sparky gets the F. Otherwise, I think I'm I'm at a I'm at like a. I'm at like a cautious B plus. Hmm. All right. I like that. Just because I'm not sure about the, I like the heal spell, but I'm like, I'm not sure how it'll play out. Um, the goblin giant, I just don't think it's enough. See, so I'm going to give it a B. Even worse than me. Yeah. Well, you said a cautious B plus, which means you don't really believe it should be there, but I'm going to just go out and say it and say it's a B. Nice. Which is still good. I mean, I personally like the heal spell, but like you said, it, time will tell, right? Magic Archer is fantastic. Goblin Giant, no, it's not enough, I don't think. I, I, I totally agree with you. But it, like we did say, it is a step in the right direction. So I think that pulls it from like the C plus B minus territory up to the B for me. The Golem makes perfect sense. The Freeze was a no-brainer. Sparky, I know you don't like it, but the rest of the world seems to enjoy it pretty much. Battle Room was pretty good. I mean, how, do you, how can you disagree with the other ones? I think it's a B. I'm still going to be plus. So I think we average out close to... <laughs> <All right>. uh, <laughs> Fine. So we're at like a an 86 together. Hashtag B. That's what this is. Nice. Mm-hmm. That was fun, man. Been a long time since we boomed it or moved it. It's been a month. Tonight, we are sponsored by Marani Music. Joe, Marani Music is a special kind of sponsor because it's part of the Cast Royale community. Daniel, a.k.a. Bach, the creative mind behind Morani Music, has been a member of the community for several months. He reached out and spoke to us about his music and the message behind it, and we found it very relatable. Daniel began making music with his younger brother when he was 14 years old. Two years later, Daniel lost his brother to a terrible tragedy, and during that time, music was a huge help as he poured his emotions into his music. Years later, he decided to begin publishing under the artist's name, Morani. Many of his songs echo the music he and his brother composed when they were just kids, and he continues to create positive and uplifting songs in hopes of impacting others. Here's a quick preview of one of his newest songs, Ginger Snap. That was awesome, Rob. Beautiful music, a beautiful story. And what's even cooler is that Morani just released his second album, Paradise, which you can find by searching Morani, that's M-O-R-A-N-I, on iTunes, Apple Music, Spotify, and all other major platforms. We also included the links to his social media in the show notes, so be sure to like and follow him on Facebook. Once again, that's Morani, M-O-R-A-N-I, on iTunes and all other major platforms. And a huge thank you to Marani Music for sponsoring our show. Wait, you know what else we got? Tell me. We got our meta check. Meta check. That's right, our friend Sir Devin Lloyd Christmas comes to us with another awesome meta check about what's been going on in the arena since the balance changes. And Joe, before I pass the mic over to you, I just wanted to let you know, this is what I was talking about earlier in the episode, Devin wants to make sure that he congratulates you on making it to Master 3. Calls it a huge accomplishment, which of course it is, uh, and he's been stuck at the early stages of Master 2 for quite some time, so you are, you're showing up Mr. Christmas over here. See, that's what I'm saying, man. Like, people just, like, notice this stuff, and then they, they, they congratulate me. This is the camaraderie that I was talking about before. It's, it's, it's so awesome to have that kind of support. So, Devin, I appreciate it, man. Rock and roll, dude. All right, so you ready for the numbers, dude? I'm ready to wheel and deal, baby. Devin hits us with him, and this is what he's got to say. Rob, the Arrows must be getting jealous with all this talk about low-cost spells, because they're making a comeback, jumping from a use rate of, get this, 2% at the tippy top of the ladder, all the way up to 16%. Ooh. And that's even beating out the log. Sacrilege. Which was only at 10%. <laughs> I don't believe it. 
It's actually pretty troubling development for the log. It isn't even competing with the Barbarian Barrel anymore, which, like we said, has skyrocketed and is currently at a 30% use rate at the tippy top of the ladder, looking at the top 25 decks in the world. And next up is the Heal Spell, which was long overdue for a buff, a rework, whatever you want to call it. But as shown by the fact that it didn't have a single appearance in the meta check over the last five months, which, by the way, is the longest running streak of any card. Wow. Up until this week, it is now in the meta check. Funny enough, the pro that had it in their deck was Jack, a 2.6 hog cycle king who Devin actually models his deck after. Ooh, cool. I love that. Interesting, though, to see how it's being used in a hog cycle deck. We'll see how that pans out and if that is how the meta continues to trend. But I think, as we talked about before, this heal spell, the new one-cost heal spell, will trend better in more baity-type decks. I think you're right. So that's it for the meta check. We won't talk about everything that was included, but we will, as always, include the meta check in the show notes. So be sure to check those out and let us know if you have any questions. But Rob, mm. I think we've got another riddle. We do. Uh, and Devin calls out that we had awesome guesses on last episode's riddle. He said that he never considered the skeletons and he's got to tip his cap towards us because technically they do rise, witch and graveyard, and they disappear to a freeze. You nailed it, dude. <laughs> you blew Devin's mind. <laughs> Sometimes, Rob. You got to take credit, you know? Sometimes. But he does say... Let's see if you can be so clever in this week's riddle. Ooh. Are you ready? I'm ready. Do you know the answer? No. Okay. This is going to be fun. I never know the answer. I don't even know why you asked me that. Well, I don't know. Well, maybe this time because I'm reading it to you and I don't have anything to be read back. So that's a fair question. I retract my statement. Okay. I'm ready. That's love right there. That is love. Mm Mm-hmm. All right. Here we go. When I charge, look out or I'll take you all out. Rocket may drop me. But your log cannot stop me. What am I? Log stops everything. (laughs) Log cannot stop me. Rocket may drop me. When I charge, look out. Okay, so let's just very quickly talk about what charges, right? Mm Mm-hmm. Battle Ram. Battle Ram, Ram Rider. Ram Rider. Dark Prince. Regular Prince. That's four. Okay. Okay. Or I'll take you all out. So it can't be the, the the prince because he does single target damage. Correct. And it also can't be the battle ram? Because it won't take anything out other than buildings. Right. And even then it won't take it out. So Rocket may drop me. Drop. But your log cannot stop me. I think I know what it is. I I just don't know if it's a card or if it's like a thing. Like he says, what am I? Hmm. So is it possible that it's the shield on the Dark Prince? Oh, you're going with like an actual thing in the game on a card. I mean, I'm digging where your head's at right now. Probably not right. (laughs) No, probably not. But he did call you out for being clever, right? So that's pretty clever. But, but I don't know the damage, so, so I, I don't want to say that. But Log cannot stop me. Rocket may drop me. <laughs> that makes it seem like Rocket kills it, right? It does make it seem like Rocket kills it, and that's how I'm reading drop you or drop me. Rocket does not kill a prince or a dark prince mm-hmm. or a battle ram because the barbarians survive. Right. It kills the ram, just not the barbarians. I think it's the ram rider. Think so? Probably not, but... (laughs) I mean, I don't have the answer, and I think it'd be more fun if we just submit it and see what happens, because... Are you just letting me guess? Do you have a guess? I agreed with all your guesses. We just talked the whole thing out. Was that not enough? You need me to guess? (laughs) So you think that it's the Ram Rider with me? Yeah. Okay. I I don't think we're right, but I don't don't think we have any other good answers. Yeah, I don't feel confident about this whatsoever. Uh, So, dude, at some point we were going to go down a blaze of glory. This may happen right now. Episode seventy-seven. See, I told you it was going to be special. Uh, Watch it be like the. um, Watch it be the 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 log on the battle ram. All right. So what's what's the answer? 
All right. Well, I'm either say if it's a card, I'm gonna say Ram Rider. If it's a thing, I'm gonna say the Ram that the barbarians carry. All right. I like it. You ready? Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> This is great. Tell me it's Sparky, and I'm going to shut my mic off. Really hope that that's what this says. All right, so now I switch the font to black, and the first one is Sparky. Because it charges up an attack every five seconds. So, of course, the first one is Sparky. So this was the perfect, perfect first answer for this Sparky-themed episode. So Sparky, Ram Rider made it in there. So we got part of it. Prince made it, Dark Prince, and Battle Ram. So we said every card except for Sparky. Yeah, and I guess you would have to throw in uh, the Zappies because they would charge just like the Sparky does, but I would have never picked that anyway. Cause... No, me neither. I think we did pretty good, all things considered. Yeah, but what, what's the answer? So he says there are two AoE cards here. That take you all out, Dark Prince... And Sparky. Oh my gosh. Yeah, and then Dark Prince will not die to a rocket, and its charge is stopped by a log. Sparky's charge will not reset to a log. Technically, Inferno Dragon and Inferno Tower do not charge. They quote-unquote shoot, focus, burn, and roast. Oh my gosh. Based on their card descriptions. So it's really Sparky. (laughs) (laughs) You must be so mad. I really couldn't have paid to have that happen to you more appropriately. I don't even know what to say. <laughs> don't say anything. You just keep digging yourself into a bigger hole. I thought we were friends, Devin. Yeah, I mean, we're friends. You and Devin may not be so much anymore, though. Well, here's something that may cheer us up. Are you ready? Yeah. There's an Easter egg riddle hidden in our answer to the current riddle. Huh? We have another riddle to do that we didn't know about because it was whited out. Okay, what is it? You ready? Yeah. I mean, if the answer's sparky, I'm not doing it. It may well be. We don't know. Here we go. Ready? Yep. Electricery. Electricity. I hit Sparky, but she still hits me. What two cards could I be? All right. Uh, Do you have guesses? Electricery. Electricity. I hit Sparky, but she still hits me. (sighs) Electro Wizard. With the new change to Sparky. Right. So so that's true. Um, With the new change, maybe. I'm going to go with the Tesla Tower. Ooh, all right. Because the only way that Sparky will see it is if the Tesla Tower sees the Sparky first. Pop, pops up and shoots. That's fair logic right there. Pretty sound. Otherwise, it's hiding, right? So I'm going to say Tesla Tower. And then what are you saying? E-Wiz? I said Electro Wizard. Okay. That's really all I got. Is there anything else it could be? Um, I just feel like it could be a couple of things, right? Like It could be like... Royal Recruits? Nah, they probably die before they reach it. Zappies? Nah, I think they would die. He did write electricery and electricity. Yeah, that's a good point. Maybe Zappies then. Um, yeah, so let's do Zappies and uh, and Tesla Tower. I'm be real upset if we switched from Ewis to Zappies and it's wrong. <laughs> right. Whatever, I'll just blame it on you. All right, where's the answer? At the top of the email, right under the word MetaCheck. Are you ready? Yeah. Here we go. What? Dude. (laughs) So the Tesla Tower is right. Tesla Tower is right, but I don't think anybody is going to be able to guess what the other answer is. Let Let me save you from having to talk about it yet again. The answer is Sparky. It is Sparky. Sparky will survive a hit from another Sparky and be able to shoot back. So, there you have it. The third time that Sparky has made an epic appearance in this episode. Yep, and and I guess the the key here was the electricery electricity. That way, you know, we were only talking about electric style cards. Right, and I really appreciated that. Boom. But also, he did write electricery, so he he really tried to trick us. He did. Devin, that was good. That was good. That was fun. You made me and Joe fall flat on our faces with that sparky answer, but that was fantastic. Boom. What does dad say? That That was was tremendous. tremendous. (laughs) Ah, And that's our meta check. That was fun, man. Always fun. Thanks, Devin. We really appreciate uh, 
having these riddles on the show. It's one of the best parts about it. Boom. Boom. So, let's move on to our... Deck Spotlight. Deck Spotlight. And this deck is called... Spark Plug. And it's a 3.3 average elixir cost deck that contains, you guessed it, Sparky, Hog Rider, Skeleton Barrel, Bats, Goblin Gang, Inferno Dragon, Barbarian Barrel, and the Zap. So, Joe, tell me what to do with this old spark plug over here. So, to be honest with you, I, I'm not sure why I chose this deck. <laughs> Um, I think I had a weak moment. Yeah. It's called Rob. It's called, it is called Rob. Yeah. Cause I said, yo, why don't you pick a deck that has Sparky in it? Because it got buffed and you hate Sparky. It'd be funny. Let me tell you how funny it is. I could tell you how funny it is. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what I've done is created a Sparky Bait style deck. Mmm. Where you have five different cards that could require a reset or cards that would be used to reset the Sparky. So, for example, the Goblin Gang, the Skeleton Barrel, the Inferno Dragon, and the Bats all are Zap-tempting cards. Right. And if the zap is used on any one of those, well, then your opponent won't have it for your Sparky. So what makes this deck kind of unique is the fact that the Hog Rider is in it because it adds a level of required answer from your opponent and not just slow and steady like a giant deck would be, Mm -hmm. but very quickly. So if you have a giant in this deck, it, it runs very slowly, right? Your opponent... You know, the giant very slowly crosses the bridge, very slowly crosses to a building, and then they kind of have a chance to pick and choose where they want to put things. But in theory, because the Sparky and the giant are so slow together, they can be close together, right? Like they can be in close proximity to one another. Right. The Hog Rider is different, right? The Hog Rider does exactly what the giant does. It's just not as tanky, Um, but it's fast, extremely fast, and it'll cause your opponent to react closer to their tower or closer to their building, which actually puts them at a range disadvantage for Sparky. Typically, the best way to kill Sparky is via air or right on top of her. But if your opponent is countering your hog rider, which is going to be at their tower, well, that creates distance between your opponent's troops and Sparky now. And your Sparky can just wreak havoc on them it's a good point the best way to play this deck is to not drop sparky within the first minute of the game you have to drop your your skeleton barrel you have to bait out a zap you have to see what kinds of cards they have and once you figure that out you'll have to time your plays correctly to ensure that you're taking advantage of their lack of zap or using zap or a reset on on something else an ideal push with this deck would be to drop sparky in the back and let her build up a charge You typically want to attack the same lane as your opponent. That way, all of your spell bait type cards can assist in killing whatever offensive threats your opponent is throwing down. You'll just have to make sure that you're spacing them out so that one spell doesn't kill all of them, which could be devastating for your push. But once you have the Sparky down, the best way to approach this deck is to drop the Skeleton Barrel at the bridge so that it can cross the river before anything else. As soon as your Skeleton Barrel crosses the bridge and has aggro from the Princess Tower, you're going to want to drop the Hog Rider on the corner of the map so that it jumps over the river. Now what this does is it allows the Skeleton Barrel to be tanking the tower, the Hog Rider to be smooth sailing, and then that's protected by the Sparky behind it. Once the Skeleton Barrel pops, it's going to deal damage to everything around it, maybe something that was trying to kill your Hog Rider, and you're going to have Skeletons that now come out and help or facilitate the offensive push. But what's even better is that the Hog Rider is going to take aggro from the tower. So your opponent's troops are going to have to figure out what to kill. (laughs) The Hog Rider or the Skeletons. Or it's going to force out a spell from your opponent, which is exactly what you want. Because if they use the spell on the Skeletons, then they don't have it for Sparky. Bingo! And even better, maybe, if they use it on the Sparky, 
well then your skeletons are going to wreak havoc. It's a tough thing for your opponent to deal with when you layer on those troops right after one another. The key is to make sure that the barrel crosses first, followed immediately by the hog rider, supported by the sparky. Boom. Boom, dude. And then it's really just smooth sailing from there. You really just decide when you want to play your barbarian barrel, typically used at the bridge in order to kill something like guards that are typically really annoying for your for your sparky to deal with, or even royal recruits, right? So just take the shield off and, and have someone there to help facilitate killing the the, the recruits. Um, the, the zap is, is super situational, and you're either going to use that in conjunction with your skeleton barrel death damage, or to facilitate the uh, hog rider getting onto the tower, or uh, just getting small troops or minions off of your um, sparky. Give it a little extra second to get to the tower and uh, obliterate it. That's the best way to put it. Now, the, the, the Inferno Dragon should only be used on defense. You should never use this as an offensive card. Uh, it can be used as an offensive counter push, but never as an offensive developer. Um, it just will not work. That, that's not how the deck is designed. Um, so, so you may be asking, well, how do I use the Goblin Gang and the Bats? Well, both can be used to cycle, like in the back, if you're just kind of, you know, trying to cycle cards and not lose Elixir. Um, but the better, you know, once you know what your opponent is playing, the better way to play it is do the push that I told you about before. But once your opponent drops spells or troops that would technically counter those cards, then throw them into the arena capitalize on your opponent's use of zap or your opponent's use of a, a, a mega minion at the bridge. Whatever they do, you can use those cards to then counter. So just keep that in mind. It's not a, it's not a throw everything at the bridge and run deck. Um, otherwise, they'll just cast a poison and they'll all die. Um, you really have to use these layered after your opponent drops their counter to them. Or better, better yet, watch out for that tornado rocket combo. Yeah, I mean, it, it, those types of things are devastating for, for, for this kind of deck, right? Like the Tornado Rocket, the, the Poison is devastating. Uh, if, if you don't time your troops right and you, and you literally just play them all at the bridge, you will lose. Um, it, it needs to, the, the, the main push needs to be played in the order that I told you about. And then mm -hmm. once your opponent uses the counters to the Goblin Gang, like if they throw a log to counter your Skeleton Barrel, well, once the log is played, then throw your Goblin Gang. If they zap your Sparky, well, then once that's done, throw the, the bats out, right? You, you got to time your, your plays after your opponent plays their counter to them. Makes sense to me. So that's the deck, man. Spark plug. It was a very tough experience for me doing this deck spotlight, but I, I uh, sucked it up for the betterment of the people. And Yeah, uh, I, I know how difficult that was for you. I'm sure you were dying a little bit on the inside. You may even spontaneously combust right before my eyes. I'm melting right now. Do you feel it? Are you like supercharging yourself? Kind of like a Sparky? <laughs> oh. Spark plug? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Nice job. I'm proud of you. This is, a, this is a growth moment for Joe. I needed this. This was like intervention. Yeah. This is like a therapy session for me. I'll take $10, please. <laughs> <laughs> I think you owe me more than that. <laughs> Probably owe you at least $100. Um, so yeah, uh, that's it for the Deck Spotlight. We did this last week. Get a new patron! New patron! Huge shout out to Daniel W., who also goes by the name Just Daniel. That's right, man. Just Daniel is actually a member of Cast Royale 2. He has been a loyal member for quite some time. We appreciate him in the community, and we truly appreciate you supporting what we do by taking your hard-earned money and help us continue to deliver fun, family-friendly, and fresh content to our listeners. Boom. Boom, dude. And that's it, man. Episode 77 in the books. In the books, an hour and 15 minutes later or so, and we did it. We did do it. Um, so if you would like to join our Discord, you can go to castrealpodcast.com slash Discord. That is where you can talk to us, but also where we post when we have open spots in any of our clans. So if you want a spot in one of our clans or if you want to meet other people from the community and join other clans that are part of the Cast Royale family, you can join our Discord. And as always, you can reach out to us on Twitter using the handle at Podcast Royale. And also, don't forget to look for us on Instagram by searching Cast Royale Podcast, all one word. And don't forget to check out our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Podcast. 
That's right. And we always say this every episode, but the number one way you can help us reach more people is by leaving us an iTunes review. But also, if you use any other podcast app that allows you to like, thumb up, comment, heart, rate, review, whatever it is, please do it because it will definitely help us on that particular platform. Also, huge shout out to clnsmedia.com for hosting our show on their site. If you're looking for the most recent episodes of our show, you can find them there. And if you're looking for any new podcasts, you can also find them there as well. And last but certainly not least, a huge shout out to Robin Hood for sponsoring tonight's show and a very special thank you to our very first community sponsor, Marani Music. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much. And Joe, we are done. I'm ready to go to bed. It's too much. The new year has already taken a toll on me and it's been like nine days and 23 hours. <laughs> Precisely. It's too much for my, for my body, my mind, my soul. And I feel like you've had all the sparky you could take, honestly. This episode is a lot for me. I I need to recoup. Yeah. While Joe is going to sit here sulking about sparky, we will see you next time for another hodgepodge of everything. Hodgepodge of everything. Boom. Boom. Bye. Bye. Bye.